of the IRA attacks that occurred over 25 years. Yet within 24 hours, we've got, we've got them. It's four lads from Leeds and Bradford. None of the family, none of their associates have the first clue about any fundamentalist tendencies. Two of them have pregnant wives. One of them works with, um, with handicapped children. I mean, it is staggering. These guys were part of a game. I genuinely believe at this juncture they thought they were part of a game. They thought they'd been recruited. It happens all the time in the U.S. In the U.S., in the mainstream media, they advertise for people to work with the FBI and effectively play the role of the bad guys. <laughs> High-risk occupation, I would guess. And that, I think, is what happened here. These guys were recruited to participate in the game. Unfortunately, they paid the price. Then we get through to the 21st. This was a crazy three days. And these three days are very, very significant to changing the memories of people, changing the, the consciousness of what is actually occurring here. Because the 21st was, to all intents and purposes, a complete non-event. One of the um, suspects, the key suspects, was a gentleman called Harun Aswat, who was tracked down to Rome and he subsequently turns out to be an MI6 asset. And the CIA are very, very upset because the CIA wanted to arrest this particular individual a few weeks earlier and were denied permission to do so. And the only time the British government normally denies permission for the US to speak to somebody they want to speak to is if they're a security agency asset. But what it did do is it did provide the opportunity for the official story to move away from the military grade explosives used on 7-7 to putting the thought in everybody's minds that the explosives used in these events were made out of stuff that you can buy in boots from hair restorer and deodorant I mean it's a complete crock and this was when they also released the information about their bombs which changed from 9 to 12 to 15 found in the car at Luton and these nail bombs were all made out of um, normal pharmaceutical products but it had the very very powerful effect of moving the focus away from the military grade explosive used on 7-7 then of course the following day was the fateful day here of uh, Jean Charles Menzies now, this event has some very, very significant implications. It is, to all intents and purposes, a complete comedy of errors. It is my opinion that the intention was obviously not to shoot an innocent individual. The target was an individual called Hussein Osman, who was thought to be in the same, living in the same block of flats as uh, Jean-Charles Menzies. The surveillance team, who I would suggest are not normal policemen, I mean it has all of the um, signatures of a group called 19 Int, which is a very, very sophisticated part of the uh, British military. And these are the guys who did a lot of the undercover work in, in Ireland uh, during the, the years of the Troubles. I mean, the, the closest they get to uh, being recognised as um, a civilian policemen is wearing a baseball cap that says police on it. But they are surveillance specialists. And the individual that was responsible for the surveillance had a video camera and he, he had it with a very powerful lens on it. And where he was positioned, everybody that was leaving the block of flats, he was videoing the individuals and then checking the video, replaying the video to determine the identity. When Jean-Charles Menzies left the apartment block, this guy, managing the surveillance, was responding to the call of nature. So he didn't actually turn the video camera on because he was trying to conserve battery power. So he radioed through that this individual had left and he wasn't sure who it was. Now, 
I have seen the photographs of the two individuals and you could argue that there is a degree of similarity similar hairline I mean it, it is not as though necessarily that there's an obvious difference but obviously something went awry because instead of uh, following this guy and uh, stopping this guy I mean we subsequently know that initial reports were uh, not totally accurate he didn't leap the barrier he used his oyster card to get into the tube he picked up um, one of the metro uh, newspapers on the way through he didn't run down the stairs the only time he ran according to the eyewitnesses was when he saw the train was at the platform and like you do when you're on the underground those last few steps he just ran to make sure that he got through the doors before they closed and the next thing of course all hell breaks loose ten bullets are pumped or are shot at him despite being at close range he's hit by seven six in the head one in the shoulder three miss at the time the police in all likelihood still believe that this is Hussein Osman and this is why Ian Blair the uh, Commissioner of Metropolitan Police initially is euphoric because he th he perceives that this is a success this vindicates you know everything that they've been doing and it also provides an opportunity to bring closure to part of the events that have occurred but of course the opposite is true and it's opened a whole new bag of worms let's take a look at some of the press that ha ha occurred Ian Blair of course is in the firing line because initially he tried to put a hold on the IPPC inquiry and the inquiry uh, um, the terms of reference for inquiry have not yet been released this is also an interesting observation I do want to come back to this the Brazilian family they dismissed the initial offer which by anybody's imagination was derisory of fifteen thousand pounds sorry fifteen thousand dollars it wasn't even pounds fifteen thousand dollars and uh, it is reported I'm still trying to check the sources here that the family through their lawyers have also rejected or subsequently rejected an offer of one million dollars because the family have said this is not about money it's about due process understanding what occurred on that day and bringing who is responsible to justice now this is very very interesting and I'm going to come back to this particular instant I issue in a second now the other issue is that the closed circuit TV pictures or the films appear to have disappeared now where, where have we seen this before this is exactly what occurred at the Pentagon the FBI couldn't get around to all of the cameras within shot of the Pentagon quick enough to confiscate the films none of those films have been released and all the people the people at the Sheraton who sit, uh, sat down to watch the film before the FBI came have uh, basically been um, uh, gagged they've had gag orders put on them so that they will not, cannot disclose what they saw in those videos before they were confiscated by the FBI the CCTV cameras on the bus were not working stagecoach say this is an impossibility the Metropolitan Police actually pay the bus companies to maintain the cameras in good work in order because obviously it helps them fight crime All, uh, the same with the cameras on the tube stations and yet on this particular day at the moment we are being told that there is no CCTV evidence of what occurred on the underground on that morning of um, 22-7 now this, is, this paper actually comes from uh, literally just um, a week ago or so and we are already starting to get some articles about the forgotten victims gun death overshadowed tragedy of bomb blast these are very telling observations very very telling indeed now something occurred then the following day not in the UK but in Egypt and that was this and this is the from the independent on Sunday the following day the horror goes on British tourists die in new 
Al-Qaeda bombing. 